they hurt me You'd find out what made me angry Then use it to your ability Now you're trying to avoid me You're the big problem here A bully to many for so many years Now shut your mouth, close your ears Never learned your lesson and nobody cares That's what you're here for This is Fantasy Esk and welcome back to The Sims 4 Royal Witch Kingdoms. Today we are continuing with the noble family of Yodmoon, where we have caught Lady Arwen in a rare moment of um, being maternal. So she is actually taking care of her child instead of, you know, taking the hands-off approach. Uh, because right now, her husband is downstairs trying to get his alchemy skill up. He is experimenting, practicing with recipes and potions because, you know, he did promise that he's going to kind of manage things, including the family business, so he is trying his best. But let's quickly go through what we saw in the movie because I personally feel like it is going to introduce us to an exciting new concept within the series. So we had um, Arwen and Darius, and I love the fact that they're on a first name basis, which I feel like we don't see too often, but it's probably because, um, you know, they, one, have an equal title. They're both Lord and Lady, um, even though Arwen is slightly above him um, because of a situation prior to marriage, but still, they're both Lord and Lady. Um, and also, they have known each other from a young age, like from beforehand, their families were quite close. Uh, so there is that familiarity and um, I feel like there's not like a huge distance in the authority they have, but also the respect they have for one another. No one reveals the other per se. They kind of have an understanding like friends. 
um, because again they've been connected for so long there's certain I feel like um, courtesies that you know like they don't put on airs necessarily so they're willing to put aside certain courtesies because of how close they are right um, that's kind of their way of expressing the intimacy of having known each other for so long but anyways Arwen and Darius they were sitting down in the master bedroom or you know in the study that's attached to it and um, he was really kind of preoccupied and not in a necessarily good mood looked a little bit stressed and so Arwen she thought well I would be a very disinterested wife if I don't if I don't ask what you're so concerned about or what's on your mind because she could tell that you know he was preoccupied with something and um, he made it plain he was like well then you have safely birthed the high lord's child which you know emery's child um, now i feel like it's time for us to focus on our own brood and then she was saying oh well <laughs> you're quite impatient i see you did not um, marry me for money i'm like money was not the reason that you wed and then he said well it's tradition one that we are both obliged to fulfill because you know they come from this community of cousin witch families that breed for appearance so there there is a tradition and there's an expectation even though they're no longer part of that now they're in yoja but you know the the way they were raised or at least the way he was raised it's persisting with him and it's kind of shaped his worldview so obviously that's kind of his main goal coming into this marriage um, and then Arwen said, well, I am not nearly as bound by, you know, age-old customs. Um, but they hadn't had their wedding night or, you know, they hadn't um, visited the marriage bed yet. So she took the initiative to lead him into their quarters. So that was that. And then he said, well, do I take this as your agreement? Like, are you agreeing? And then she kind of said, well, you've made it plain that you want me. And with Arwen, we know she has a very self-absorbed personality. And even with Emery, yes, she might not have been the most excited about having a child for the sake of having a child because she actually genuinely wants one to love. No, she's more like the type of person who wants to increase his status. And she felt like giving the High Lord an heir is going to increase his status, especially in competition with Lady Ismira, Eodvel, who's like their noble neighbor. So that was going on. Um, and this time around, it's not the same thing because obviously any kids she has with um, Darius, they aren't going to be heirs or in line for anything. Um, but with Emery, she felt a little bit kind of discarded because he didn't want her. Or he wasn't pursuing her actively. That's kind of part of her personality. She likes it when the partner pursues her actively because it validates her own like sense of self-importance. So... Darius, you know, he has been really clear that he wants her, so she's happy to oblige um, in that regard. And if children comes from that, then so be it. So that's what happened there. And then afterwards, we saw this moment with the baby, High Lady Mirabel, and with her primary caretaker, Darius, Lord Darius, her stepfather. So he came into the uh, nursery and he said, I really hope you take your Nalka's coloring as you age, so your mother's coloring, um, because then you will be perfect. A pure Zabrastra is the word that he used, which means pale witch. Um, and then he was like, if you, if you take after, like if you resemble your Katyan, your father, then I'll be a little disappointed, but I guess it doesn't really matter. Your mother and I, like your Nalka and I, will just make more, right, of the brood. Um, kind of like we'll have a whole brood as tradition dictates. So that's kind of his mind frame right now, his mindset, his goals, I suppose, in the family. But the cool thing that I feel Awan and Darius's story is introducing to our gameplay is going to be the concept of pure blooded witches or witch races so pure blood races um, and obviously we have our own kingdoms right but and they focus on different magics which is kind of their dividing factor or the differentiating factor but across the kingdoms 
now we're going to start seeing, hopefully, slowly over time, the idea of pure blood races pop up, starting with the Pale Witches or the Zobrastra. So how is the concept of a pale, oh, not a pale witch, but you know, how is the concept of a pure blood race going to work? Well, basically, um, pure blood races, they are, go hold, hold on, let me just, is this child being fed? I think it's been taken care of. Good, 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 good. Let's feed. Come on, feed and then talk to your child. But essentially, okay, what are pure blood races? Pure blood races are gonna be witches who have a specific appearance. So I don't mean just skin tone. You have to have the same skin tone, eye color, and hair color. Like they have a particular hair color, eye color, and skin color to count as that pure blood race. And the Zabrastra, the pale witches, they have the appearance that we see in Arwen and Yodmoon. They have to have pale gray or pale blue skin, um, and not the kind that the Rama dusts have, not the kind that, um, um, oh geez, who is the, I can't even, geez, I, I can't even remember the name of the, oh my goodness, this is so bad, but the oldest Rama dust sister. I do not remember her name. I know it starts with M, but I don't know what it is. It's just uh, escaping my mind right now. Um, is it Merida? I think it's Merida. I'm going to go with Merida for now, but not the skin tone that Merida has. That doesn't count as a pale skin tone. But essentially the skin tone that we saw in Eldrick and Veronica, except Eldrick does not count as a Zabrastra, and uh, neither do any of his siblings, you know, the deceased Veronica because you have to have white eyes, white hair, and the pale skin to count as a pure blood witch, to count as a Zabrastra. So, if Mirabelle looks exactly, exactly like her mother, then she will also be a Zabrastra. If she has um, mixed genes, then, you know, she'll be just a hybrid witch and she won't count as a pure blood. So, um, that would not be ideal for Darius. But there we go, that is kind of what pure blood races are going to be. And we are slowly going to start discovering them over time. How are we going to discover pure blood races? Well, that's going to happen whenever there is a couple who looks exactly the same. So if a couple has exactly the same skin color, eye color, and hair color, then we are going to count that as a new pure blood race that we are discovering. So. Right now, this couple is like the only one. They look exactly like each other, and that's how I was inspired by the story. Like, that's what inspired their story um, and their background. And then from that, like, the more we're playing, I'm like, hold on a second, we could actually do something pretty cool with this. So, not, um, obviously the different witches, you know, they won't necessarily be looking always to find someone that looks exactly like their child to pair, pair them up with, or even if they're finding marriage partners for themselves, it's not like they'll be seeking out others that look exactly like them. No, we still gonna, they're gonna prioritize obviously matches, like royalty and nobility like we've been doing so far, but in the instances where we do have uh, couples that look exactly the same, then, you know, we'll, we'll find or we'll see, discover a new pure blood race. And then I think that'll be interesting over time because then we will start having more dynamic within the world where we won't only be divided by skill set and the kingdoms you come from, but, you know, which race you represent within that kingdom. Um, so I think that'll be really, really cool. Like with um, Eldrick, I mean, he's got gray hair right now from old age, but, you know, he, he wouldn't have counted anyways. But I think that's going to be really, really exciting. Like, even with, for example, Samara right now and Vex. Like, if Samara and Vex got married, they would not count as a pure blood race, or we wouldn't discover a pure blood race, because the only thing they have in common is a red skin. Um, Samara has brown hair and, I think, dark blue eyes, whereas Vex, he's got, like, pink eyes and he has red hair, so it doesn't, that doesn't count. Vex would have to marry someone with red skin, red hair, and pink eyes um, for us to discover a new pure blood race. 
So let me know what you guys think about that, but I'm like really excited by this concept. I have like a whole section in my spreadsheet now dedicated to pure blood races that we're going to be discovering. And I love that the Zobrastra are the first ones that we're seeing. So obviously, obviously, Darius very much wants to continue this brood. And I feel like for pure blood couples, that will be a primary kind of concern for them, continuing the lineage of that particular race. Um, and obviously, he's going to be heartbroken if uh, they don't have that brood that he wants, that traditional brood of his. So we are waiting to see at this point whether or not uh, Arwen is pregnant. But also, look at this. He is happy. He is joyous about the birth of this baby, even though it is his stepchild and um, not his biological daughter, because there is the potential for her to be a Zabrastra. He doesn't know just yet. They don't know just yet. They have to wait and see um, what skin tone she's going to take. But like even Becerra, the skin color Becerra has, that yes, is a Zabrastra skin tone, but she doesn't have the, the proper eye and hair color, so she doesn't count. Um, but like if she grew up and she actually married someone with the exact same appearance as a hair color, eye color, skin color, that would be like a brand new pure blood race. That we would discover. So that's kind of cool, I feel like. And I mean, even you could have a new pure blood race that um, had similar similar qualities to another race. So for example, if we had another couple that had pale skin, um, white hair, and black eyes, that would be a brand new pure blood race if they if the couple looked exactly the same. Or if they had white eyes, pale skin, and black hair, that would be a new race as well. So you can have like minute differences between races. But that is how we're going to discover them. So I'm excited. I am really, really excited by this whole flipping concept. And it was going to take us time because like from what I've seen, the spread of genes that we have across the witch families, it is like so different. It is so different. And this is like the only couple that actually look like each other at all. Um, everyone else is quite quite different so I feel like that is really really cool but also if you guys remember anyone that looks the same can you like let me know I mean I could just check the spreadsheet and I did before I jumped in and um, I don't think we have anyone I did a quick scan I don't think we have anyone that looks exactly the same in the younger generations but um that would be very very fascinating I feel very very fascinating Ah, but okay, okay, I'm trying to think. Is there anything else on my mind that I was supposed to mention? Uh, I don't think so. This was kind of the, the big thing that I was really excited to share with you guys this time around. Um, but yeah, we need to get Darius to work on potions even more. So we are definitely going to be trying to do that as much as possible. Um, he's gotten some experience, so he was doing stuff because it, this was at zero when I started the episode. Like, there was nothing in that in that bar over here. The flow of magic was quite, quite stagnant. But now he has started doing a lot more practicing, so we're seeing a whole bunch of that. And um, he does want to be friendly with Arwen, chat with Eldrick, so he hasn't forgotten about Eldrick just yet. And then Arwen wants to become friends with Lady Izmira and be mischievous to Valar, so we'll try and get some of those things done actually. So can you, while you're doing that, be friendly with Arwen? Let's try and do this. Let's try and be friendly with her. Give her a pep talk, maybe. Give her a pep talk. Is she going to come down? Or are you, like, too busy with your potions right now to do anything there? That would be quite unfortunate. I kind of... I know I was supposed to... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave him for a bit. It is really late, though, and I don't think I is going to be able to invite Valar or Izmira, unfortunately. So, I might jump back when uh, it is maybe the daytime and they're actually able to invite people in, and then we'll uh, continue. Oh yeah, before we leave off, I was going to mention, with um, Arwen and, I might have already said this, Darius, they have, um, like in cast, different skin tones, but their skin tones, uh, it's like a minute difference. Minute difference. Yaris is like a pale blue, and... Um, 
our one is a pale gray, but they look practically the same. So I'm going to count it as the same. So with the Zabrastra, you have to have pale gray or pale blue skin. Um, and you can see, like with these two, Darius looks just a shade brighter than Arwen, but they look practically the same. So I'm happy to count that as, you know, the same race. But okay, okay, I am going to let them do their thing and then we'll check back later. It is 11 a.m. on Friday, and um, Darius has invited over High Lord Eldrick because we, you know, shouldn't forget about our connections as soon as we've gotten what we wanted and married into the Yard Moon family. So we are going to. Well, I think Alwyn's going to greet him. She's going to do a. Is there a respectful introduction? Yes, because he has more authority than her. But also, I think in this relationship, Alwyn's the one who is going to be, you know, greeting the guests and welcoming them into the estate. That is kind of the privilege that she has. So she's going to do that. And also, because she has kind of more authority than Darius, it would be considered rude to not acknowledge the guests who come into the estate. Because you represent the family, right? Um, because the baby right now, well, the baby's too young to invite people in. Um, so as soon as she's able, she's going to start doing that. But for now, uh, Darius is the one who is going to chat with Eldrick. So actually, actually, let's gush about partner. Heck yeah, we're totally going to do that. Gush about your partner because you have been wanting this for who knows how long. And finally, you have managed to secure the wife of your dreams. So let's go on down. Let's kind of... Show Eldrick how happy we are. And it, I suppose it wouldn't hurt for it to be said in front of Arwen. She very much would be pleased by that. So, okay, there we go. Ah, I love seeing our Zabrastra. Look at them. Look at them. Our pale witches. They look so cool. So, so cool. Right. Well, um, okay, now he is flirting with her. Of course he is. And what's this? Be friendly with Arwen. Let's try and be friendly with her then. Let us evangelize vegetarian benefits. Even though she herself is not a vegetarian, but you know, it's his preference. He's gonna do he's gonna do that if that's what he wants. I'm sure she is like I think they had Palak Paneer for um dinner last night, breakfast this morning, something like that. Which is an Indian dish. It's like cottage cheese and spinach. Which is quite nice. But, um, yeah. That, that is adorable. Okay, well, Eldrick, he's gonna stick around, no doubt. I feel like once Eldrick has been invited to a place like this, he's not gonna want to leave until he's, like, snooped around. So, that is fine and well. Snoop if you wish. Snoop if and as you wish. But let's go relieve ourselves. And then, if possible, discard content and let's try and get you to experiment a bit more with potions. He's got some talent points. We are going to give him Belinda Arm, of course. Nice. And then Alwyn, she wanted to befriend Izmira. So once I have gotten her to take a quick break. Oh, geez, that's broken. Something's broken. Something is always broken. Like somewhere. Everywhere. Let's come here. Let's um use the restroom. And then we are going to invite over Izmira. And actually, look, we still have some food, which is good. But let's invite over Izmira. Let's see. And then you can befriend her just a little bit more. And I think that will be very, very good. And Eldrick, look at this. He is like unwilling. He's uncomfortable right now. Who knows why? But he's unwilling to let her go. He's like trying to stretch the conversation on for as long as possible. Which I mean, hey, that is fine and well. That is fine and well. But um, do you have the guts to come into the estate? Do you? Do you really? You scheming, you scheming old witch. I don't know if he does. Darius, let's uh, experiment. Let's do some experimentation. Yes, yes, yes. There we go. There we go. And you have to try and be just as good as Emery was. You have to try, my bud. What's this? Samara? Yes, no, Samara. I don't know what Vulcanae you are trying to run away with, but 
totally don't do that, please. Let's let's not go there. Okay, um, Eldrick looks kind of miserable. I feel like maybe Eldrick is of the mind that um, Darius is getting distracted in his marriage with the whole Zabrastra thing, and he's not focusing on the potion trade as much as he was supposed to. And Eldrick, he's like waiting. He's waiting for this supply of potions to be given to him, but um, Darius has completely something else, you know, on his mind that he's trying to work towards. Okay, Alwyn, let us welcome um, Ismira in. And okay, we aren't friends, but she does want to become friends with Ismira. Maybe Alwyn has learned to appreciate the, all the help Ismira has been giving her, like during the course of her pregnancy. Or maybe not. Maybe she just wants someone uh, that she can flaunt whatever she has to. So, yeah, that'd be intriguing. That'd be intriguing. Okay, let's come on in. Also, also, is this mirror pregnant? Or is that just her clothes? Does it look as though her tummy is just a little bit more curved than usual? I don't know. Does, doesn't it, guys? It might just be her clothing, but kind of, I don't know. Looks like, third, like a first trimester sort of vibe. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe I'm overthinking things. She hasn't shown any signs or anything like that. That is intriguing, though. And we haven't had any pop-ups from um, what I've been able to tell. Okay, Darius. Guess who needs your attention right about now? It is the High Lady. So let us change her dirty diaper. Let's bottle feed. Let's cuddle her. I mean, his relationship with Mirabelle is going up slowly and slowly, but, you know, he does spend the most time with her. So, yes, when the High Lady cries, you run. You run. What's happening? Who's going up to ten? Is Eldrick going to look at the child? Eldrick. Eldrick, get back off, dude. But, I mean, if you want, you can go and take care of her, but, you know. Jeez. A little bit intrusive, my dude? Just a little bit intrusive? Okay, let's um, joke about politicians, why not? Which would be, you know, the nobility, I suppose. Maybe the royalty of some of the other kingdoms. So they would bond over that. Heartfelt compliment. Let's uh, discuss our favorite traveling band of musicians. Let's uh, complain about the wind, because, I mean, I, I don't see how... Oh, one can have a conversation with anyone without complaining about something. Oh, Eldrick is gonna leave now. What, did the child yell at you? How far did he get? Well, he made it. Well, that was awfully suspicious. He made it up. He didn't even do anything or help out with the child. He kind of just wanted to look at the heir of Yodmoon. Maybe he's trying to scheme, you know? Like, uh, when this child grows up, I'll be able to influence her. Um since, you know, I kind of have hold or I have a foot in the family through Darius. Maybe he's, like, scheming all of this from the get-go. Uh, I wonder if a part of him is grateful that the high lady is, like, an infant because that would make her more susceptible to his manipulations and machinations. Interesting. Okay, Darius, come on up. I think it's your turn to step in because Eldrick did not do anything of importance over here while he was here. Also, I don't think Eldrick and Hellicent are going to be expanding the family at all. Um, I mean, Hellicent still could, but again, she hates children, and I feel like it was quite clear that she was not going to uh, have any more than Becerra. Becerra was like the necessary child, but um, she definitely is not going to be encouraging any more attentions of Eldrick in that regard. Very opposite to what we have going on in this family. But okay, let us tend to the little one. Nice. And I wonder at what point Darius is finally going to become friends with Mirabel. And if, like, you know, over the years he might actually start having genuine affection for her beyond her potential to be a Zabrastra. I feel like that would be, that'd be interesting. But okay, we will let them be. Look at this. Look at this. I mean, how can you not wish that there was, you know, something more. Something of a fatherly affection for this child. Okay, 
you guys, how you going? You going good? Let's continue chat. Fluent wealth, that is totally something that she would do. But uh, I, I think we will. I think we'll refrain from that just yet. Oh, oh, should we? Should we refrain? I mean, that's something she'd totally do, isn't it? Where is it under friendly? Can can we actually go and flaunt our wealth? Can we? I don't know where that option went. Hmm. I am not entirely sure. Maybe she's not in the wealth flaunting mood anymore. My bad. Next time we see that, I will try and take up the opportunity. Okay, let's uh, tell a funny story. Heartfelt compliment. Let's continue chatting. Uh, tell her a joke. Is Mira? Is Mira? Let's go find her. We'll go converse with her. Where'd she go? Oh, she's up here. I feel like everyone's drawn to the child right now, which is fine. Let's uh, have a deep conversation. Let's uh, tell her an engaging story. Give her a heartfelt compliment. Okay, the queue is full. That is fine. And then Darius, he's having an episode. Uh, become friends with High Lord Eldrick. Okay, so even Darius is right now wanting to befriend High Lord Eldrick. So I suppose it is safe to assume that he has not forgotten Eldrick. Maybe all he needed was a visit from Eldrick and a, you know, gentle maybe reminder that he should not forget his debts that is interesting okay he's gonna come on over alan might come down to greet him into the estate so let's invite him in oh my goodness so many guests that she has to deal with so many people she has to deal with who's trying to communicate nope hellicent hellicent no, thank you. We are busy, like, actually doing stuff with, um, your husband. We are busy. Okay, have we invited him in? We must have. We must have. Maybe on the... Yes, he's inside. Okay, let's chat with him. Let's not be flirtatious. Mm-mm-mm. Try and be friendly with him. Um, don't start a rumor. I don't know if he's going to appreciate stuff like that. Let's just be friendly. Let's ask about his day. Come on. Ask about his day. Be friendly with him. Be Complain if that is what you wish to do. Complain. Eh, about the wind, about the cold, about the sun. I don't know. Time, maybe. Life. Complain, complain. Let's discuss local fishing spots. We have one we rarely visit. Uh, evangelize vegetarian benefits, why not? Um, we shall not complain about the wind in such quick succession, but let's discuss interests. We'll go ahead and brighten his day. There we go, your mood's improving just a little bit, slowly but surely. Look at Eldrick being so scandalized by the wind. Tell a funny story. Um, Talk about the windy weather. Do an impression. I mean, they're gaining sentiments with each other. Have a deep conversation. I mean, they seem to be getting along just fine. Eldrick, Eldrick. You kind of just dumped the whole conversation. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? Don't duel for ingredients. Don't duel for the ingredients. Um, let's see. Uh, discuss expanding the family. I mean, hey, we could, but I... So that option, I'm not entirely sure, but I think that option actually encourages the other Sam to do that. And I don't want to be the deciding factor in whether or not they have, uh, like they, ex uh, you know, extend their family. I, I don't want that to be a thing. I want them to do it of their own volition. Okay, where is his mirror? I'm so sorry. I've neglected his mirror. She was wandering around here somewhere. His mirror comes over to cook almost all the time. She's leaving. Call his mirror back. Call his mirror back. We are not done. We are not done. Ismira, apologies. We got distracted with Eldrick. Please come back. Please. We need you. Okay. Um, let's invite her in. And then we shall continue. You know, it feels like Darius is definitely more 
um, determined, focused perhaps, because Eldrick came and he wasted no time in befriending Eldrick. Whereas this Mira, you know, she's, I mean, she's getting sidetracked. I suppose she's not used to making effort with others. Others usually make an effort with her. But let's, let's go on out while the child is sleeping. I mean, not that you have a huge part in taking care of the high lady, but um, let's chat with her a bit more, brighten her day. I don't think we should have long before we'll be able to consider her a close friend of ours. We'll joke about the politicians. We'll do an impression. Heartfelt compliment. Let's see. Deep conversation. What else? Tell a funny story. Why not? Why not? Uh, discuss neighborhood changes. How Ioja was kind of ignored for a while there and stuck, but now things are changing. People are building connections and, you know, it's just, it's becoming really good. Uh, for Darius. Now here's the thing. If Darius is the one who wants to, um, if he wants to do the potion trade, I mean, obviously he doesn't have a full stock of potions, so he can't do it just yet. He needs to build up on that. But if it's something that he wants to go into, then he is going to need to know at least two families outside of Ioja. And actually, he knows the Holdigans and he knows the Rawans. So he could, like, get straight into it. He doesn't even have to wait that long. Which is pretty cool. Oh, nice! We're friends! We're friends with Ismira, which is good. And look at Eldrick trying to weasel his way into befriending Arwen. Because, you know, at the end of the day, Arwen's the one with more authority. And oh my goodness, we have hungry sims. Thank oh, I was going to say, thank goodness Darius is cooking. But what is Darius cooking? He's cooking one serve of food, you selfish, selfish Zobrastra. Okay, um, let's see. I, we, need, we need to have someone, I swear, regularly called over to cook for us. You know, it would be great. I don't know why The Sims doesn't have this. I mean, I understand that a butler kind of does this, but like, not really. Your butler doesn't even autonomously make food for you. But with the caterer, if we could have a recurring caterer, like um, with the maids, like can't we just, you know how you have a scheduled maid that, you know, you don't have to call them over every single time. They'll just come daily. Can't we have daily caterers that come, like, and do cooking for most of the day and then they go away and come back again without me having to specifically call them to cook for us? I mean, I'm sure wealthy families would love stuff like that. They should introduce that as a feature, honestly. Because it's, uh, it's slightly frustrating to have to do that all on your own all the time. Okay, Darius, he's, like, eating his bit of food while it's coming down. Alwyn, do you want to maybe call a caterer? You know what? I have to cut this conversation short. Else she shall die. And we don't want that. Okay, who has decided to come and cook for us? Okay, it's a Vulcane. It's a Vulcane, someone appropriate um, to come and cook for us. But she's also going to make just her own mac and cheese at the cauldron because she's like so hungry she does not have the patience to wait that is fine and well we do not wish you to die that would be very very tragic uh, but I think she has enough like hunger there she's got enough fulfillment I think to hopefully make this batch of mac and cheese and eat it I don't know I mean she could you know she could just drink this potion she could drink this potion um, and, and risk it, but I feel like it's important not to because that's the kind of stuff you want to save for the potion trade. <laughs> uh, so maybe, maybe consuming the potions you have is not, you know, the wisest idea. Also, it could backfire. It hasn't exactly been tested on anyone. That was like a sample batch. What's happening here? I hope we don't have any uh, any flirts being thrown around. That would be very, very unfortunate. Um, I solely hope that is not what I just saw, my dudes.
because that would not be cool. Remember how you're trying to work on Arwen? Yeah, let's not let's not sacrifice the Zabrastra dream because the neighboring lady is showing you just a little bit of attention. Mm -mm. Let's not do that. What is happening? Oh, okay. He's being flooded with by Ismira. Ismira, get your act together, woman. What are you doing? What are you doing? Look at Ismira. I see you, Ismira. And I thought Alwyn was the cunning one. Okay, come on. Let's eat. You're about to drop dead. Come on, eat. Eat, eat, eat. Have some food. There we go. There we go. Nice. So we got some food sorted. I swear, the mac and cheese. The mac and cheese. It is seriously a savior at times. Okay, um, you need to go to bed actually. It is late. You are tired. Let's just go to sleep. Let's just go to sleep. And also, Alwyn, um, did she not succeed in conceiving? Um, she did not. Oh, that's unfortunate because the option to take a test is not there anymore. Huh. Well, seems as though the uh, Zabrastra dream is running a bit dry, uh, which is quite unfortunate. So, you know, Darius, you should probably be showing more attention to her than to Ismira because that ain't gonna help you at all in any way, shape, or form. Okay, we'll get um, Arwen to come up. We'll get her to take a bath and then we'll send her to bed. And she's been wanting to be mischievous with Vela for a while now, so I feel as though we should let them rest and then get, get a move on with that maybe tomorrow at some point. So I will let them off and I will see you guys soon. It's 8 a.m. on Saturday and look who has come to visit to help with the food situation in this house. It is Lady Otro's Rowan. So the Rowans, you know, they've been really nice to us and the Eodvels. I feel like the Rons and the Yodvilles have been really nice and good to us about making sure that we are well catered for, so that is really sweet of them. But Darius over here, while we are waiting for breakfast to be served, wants to be friendly with Lady Arwen, so we are going to do just that. Let's, um, let's go ahead and inside joke, maybe. We'll do an inside joke, and then I suppose... You know, that hug would have been very cute, actually. That hug would have been very, very nice. But let's try and ask how her day has been. And then we have to run and take care of the child. So let us quickly do this, and then we'll check up on um, High Lady Mirabelle, who is right over here. So let's go bottle feed and bounce. So go do that. And he also wants to stargaze with High Lord Eldrick, but I mean, it's the daytime. So we're not going to, um, we're not going to pin that down. Maybe he's, hopefully, hopefully he's gonna have some other whim. Oh, look at that, look at that. Now that is a whim we can work with, yes, yes, yes. Okay, let's, um, actually I feel like it would be a bit awkward to do this right now because we have someone trying to, uh, help us out just a little bit. So where else could we excuse ourselves to? Maybe to this. I think we could excuse ourselves to these quarters. Uh, why do I say that? Because um, we don't have a kitchen there. And so it is highly unlikely that Lady Artros. Oh wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before you do that, let's let's eat, let's eat. See, Owen has the, the right way of it. She's like, um, breakfast, please. Yeah, we'll, we'll let them eat. You go eat. And then we can end off on a high note. Even though this isn't necessarily going to get us what we want. Um, but you can kind of see the relationship right now. Their friendship is kind of midway. Their romance is really low. So obviously, you know, this is a marriage of necessity like of convenience literally you can see um, but hopefully by doing this we get them in a place um, 
and also because of the whole, you know, befriending Eldrick, befriending Ismira, befriending Valar, hopefully we'll get the opportunity for pop-ups when we play with the other households. I mean, because the next kingdom that we're going to is like back to Ramong. So this way, like even if we're with the Rowans, then we might get pop-ups for these two and the Zabrastra brood that Darius really, really wants. Okay, Darius, he's being crazy. He's being, he's like in a crazy mood right now. Eat your breakfast. Shove it in your mouth. Come on, eat it. Eat it. There we go. There we go. Nice. How obedient. How obedient. <laughs> but let's, let's finish that up. Let's finish that up. And are you done? Are you done? Are you done? Yes, okay, now he's done. Jeez. Jeez, that took a while. Okay, Owen, and uh, let's get you up. No, 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 not that, not that. Hold on a second, what's going on? Yep, Hellicent, hi, hello. Let's relax, and then, actually, um, yeah, hopefully that gets the fun up as well. Now, this aside, just in terms of whims, Owen has a whim, oh, jeez, hold on, hold on. I see the problem. Okay, they literally want to run away from me right now. So I'm going to turn autonomy off so that they listen. Seriously. Where are you going? Where are you going? Stop trying to run away, dude. But yeah, um, Owen had the whim to chat with Lady Hellicent. And I was like, hold on a second. You don't even know Hellicent. And yes, she doesn't really know Hellicent. But I think when Eldrick came over and he was... Actually, she might have met Hellison during the, the wedding party they had. Um, but also, I don't think Hellison was invited, but Eldrick, you know how he weaseled his way into a conversation and he was really trying to stretch it with Arwen? I think he probably mentioned his wife. And that's probably how Arwen knows of Hellison. And now she's curious and she's thinking, well, maybe I should, um, maybe I should invite her over and, you know, say hello, get to know her a bit more. So that's an interesting. That's intriguing. Okay, let's go ahead. This is interesting. It's taking us to like the serious, serious ocean, but that's not what we want. Look, they can try for a baby, but that's not what we want. Uh, that's not what they want right now. I mean, yes, we, we know they do. We know they do, but like, you know, the whims have not directed us in that direction. Um. Could we excuse ourselves here, potentially? Apparently not. Apparently not, and I don't know why that is. Why is that? If we, okay, if we get out of here, I'm just gonna have to let them be free because I don't think um, taking away their freedom is gonna make them any more cooperative in this instance. Let's see, do we really not have anything we can do in this regard? Really? What about Arwen? Can Arwen initiate this? Because he is being unable to. Even she, I think, cannot. Just look at this, we don't have any, any other whim. Huh, you know that's funny. That is funny because it feels like they're being very single-minded. Like, even with Arwen, uh, when we're clicking, like, on the beds and stuff, she doesn't even have that option at all. And the only one who does is Darius. And look, he has this specific option. <laughs> so I think we all know what Darius is, like, where his mind is at, what he's focused on. We all know. We all know. But okay, guys, with that said and done, I'm going to leave off here. Thank you so much for watching. Oh, he's friends with the high lady. That's really nice. But um, I hope you all enjoyed when we come back next time, we are going to be with the royal family of Vermont. Hopefully, the friendships we have built uh, while playing with this family is going to ensure the continuation of the Zobrastra, our pure blood pale witches. Um, and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.